Okay. Um, but please, please come. Yeah, I'd love to. I know everybody's always busy, life, 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 stuff, stuff, stuff. But I'm doing what I can. You're doing a lot. I really admire the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. I, I feel like I can never get it all done. So I think we're live. We're going to let in our one person. We're going to wait a few minutes before we get all the way started. Awesome. There it is. OK. Nice stuff, stuff, stuff. okay. Seems to be a little bit of a lag here. All right. Okay. Hey, Mama Karima. Hi, Dr. Dandridge. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Yay. <laughs> so we're gonna we're live on Facebook and we're gonna wait a few minutes. Um, I've been gone for two weeks. <laughs> I was telling Mama Demita. And uh, I don't know if we're gonna have a whole lot of people join us today, but it's always live on Facebook so people can go back and take a look at it. Oh nice. Yep. That and then <laughs> we have a web. Mm, a YouTube channel for the Black Acupuncturist. Um, talking, we have a YouTube channel for BlackAcupuncturist.com. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. And so all of the videos are being moved over to the YouTube channel. And um, uh, in case you also don't know, while Facebook may or may not be listening, we have been officially uh, incorporated. We are officially a nonprofit. We are five or one C. And that's the point of the kickoff meeting on the 26th. So if there's any other Black acupuncturists, Black acupuncturist students out there, make sure you send an email to info at blackacupuncturist.com so that you can get the information for joining us on the 26th. Now I got to look. I got to make sure I'm not lying. I'm pretty sure it's the 26th. It is. It's the 26th. Wow. Okay. That's awesome. We are, um, we're moving along. We're moving yeah, along. We're getting it. Is. Getting right along. Yeah. All right. So as it is now, of hey, there we are. We got husband, brother, somebody in the background, maybe giant teenage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got home from work. He about to leave. <laughs> so thank you everyone for coming and for participating. This is um, Black Acupuncture Meet and Greet Acupoints, and today we have the wonderful Mama Demita Hartz, who has agreed to come join us and talk about mental health. For those of you who may or may, who may, or may not have seen the show, the, the whole point of this show is that people are unaccustomed to seeing Black acupuncturists and African-American acupuncturists. And so we are just kind of doing this to highlight the fact that there are quite a few of us here in the United States and that we are acupuncturists and that we are awesome at what we do. So without further ado, I'm your host, Dr. Tanisha Dandridge, the owner and operator at Everyone's Place and co-founder of BlackAcupuncturist.com. If you haven't checked out the website, it is awesome. I'm so like, so stoked. And we have a brand new, beautiful, magnificent logo. You guys go check out blackacupuncturist.com. And then I'd like to turn it over to Mama Demita Her Hartz. Sorry. I want to okay. call Harris for some reason. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> <laughs> Please forgive me. <laughs> it's okay. It's absolutely okay. Yeah. So you are an acupuncturist. How long have you been in practice? So I haven't been in practice for about three years, um, like two, well, two or three years. Um, so I graduated from Dragon Rises College of Oriental Medicine, and I'm also a licensed acu, as well as a licensed acupuncturist. Also, I'm also a licensed mental health counselor. Um, so, <laughs> so I wear two hats. Um, so I've been a licensed mental health counselor for about seven or eight years now. So that's been kind of interesting, kind of walking um, two different um, lines. Unnecessary line, you know, we talk quite a bit about mental health and traditional Chinese medicine and how emotions are definitely an etiology of disease, which is not something that is really often spoken about in Western medicine. So we'll be getting a little deeper into that. Where did you go to acupuncture school? So I went to acupuncture school at Dragon Rises College of Oriental Medicine in Gainesville, Florida. Um, oh. Hey! Um, <laughs> I'm sure he'll do it again. <laughs> but um, yeah, I went to school in Gainesville and Dragon Rises. Um, so that's, um, 
That's a school that was founded by um, Dr. Um, Hammer, Dr. Leon Hammer. Hey. Uh, so a lot of people know him from the book Dragon Rises, Red, Red Bird Flies, words, uh -huh. um, as well as the Heart Shock book and a few others as well. Heart Shock is definitely a book that I have read over more than once. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Hammer. All right. <laughs> so you, you've been doing mental, you, you've been a licensed mental health care professional for a really long time. What made you become an acupuncturist? Honestly, working for, um, so I used to work for a lot of home-based um, agencies. So one of the things that I noticed over and over again is how it relates to, um, well, with helping my clients with their substance abuse, that's a big one. Um, with depression, with anxiety and whatnot. And just seeing how many, you know, physical issues that have alongside of that and how much the doctors will, they'll give them the antidepressants or the anxiety medicine, but they're not looking at, at their diet. They're not looking at any other factors. They're not looking at how the, the state of their mental health is affecting um, their body and vice versa. And I've always wanted to go into holistic medicine, even when I was like much younger as a child. And that seemed like, well, this seems like a good time to expand into that. Because um, honestly, with a lot of the medication, they have side effects that, in my opinion, some of them are just very unnecessary, especially for uh, mild to moderate um, cases that hitting, um, what was it, using a cannon to kill a mosquito kind of method yeah. for some of the medication. So yeah. I wanted to look into other ways that it can be addressed without um, damaging my clients and also uh, making it cost effective because I've had certain clients who are, um, who were lower social economic status and they couldn't afford their medication. So the mm -hmm. idea of like, do I pay rent or do I pay for medication? Or do I eat that day? Or do I send my kid to school with clothes? So a lot of um, working with that population and seeing what a drain it was on them. Again, I wanted to do more because the anxiety and the stress um, that a lot of people um, experience, especially BIPOC people in certain areas, it's it just becomes like a very vicious cycle. And I want to be part of like breaking that cycle. So did you experience acupuncture for yourself before you decided to become an acupuncturist or was it through research? How did you get into acupuncture specifically? Specifically, um, so the story is, uh, so, <laughs> so I was sharing my injuries one day with, I was considering going to school for osteopathy, but my interest kind of seemed a little bit more aligned with acupuncture and holistic medicine. <laughs> so at the school that I went to, um, to ask for that, they told me about Dragon Rises. And I'm like, okay, I'll consider it maybe. Um, and then at the time, my husband and I, we owned our own food business. We were making veggie burgers and sauerkraut and banana jam and all that lovely stuff and ginger beer. Um, yes. So the place that we were making our um, products out of that was letting us use their space, um, the school was right around the corner. And they told us, but we were talking about an interest, like, Oh, you should check out that school. I'm like, okay, the so universe decided to tell me this twice. All right, <laughs> Pay let's go ahead and check it out. Uh, so I checked them out. Um, I spoke to the admissions director at the who was there at the time, and she told me more and more about the school. And it's like, okay, this seems like it might be something I'm interested in. Um, so she suggested that I go ahead and audit um, one of the classes, and it was the food science, um, the food science class. So I'm like, okay check it out, see what's going on here. So I'm in the food science class and at the time, well, me and my husband were very big on Western aid price. Um, so we were very interested in food and how our um, healing our gut um, environment um, could help with different health issues, mental health issues um, and also physical issues. And here we are. And that's what they're talking about. They're talking about um, all the stuff they were interested in, like, okay, I think I might like this school. <laughs> uh, so that, that really got us started. But even though I signed up for the school, um, I still wanted to check it out, check out what it looked like to be an acupuncturist. So at the time I was living in Lake City, um, which anybody who knows Lake City, yes, I am sorry too. 
Um, <laughs> but um, one of the former graduates, he was there and he, I asked him, hey, can I shadow you for a day? And he was open to it and welcome. And the thing, just watching the results the, that he was getting with the needles and with treatment and the kicker for, well, not the kicker, but kind of like the, the moment for me that like grabbed me was when he was doing um, Circle the Dragon on a veteran who had lost um, about half of one of his legs. So he was dealing with a lot of phantom pain syndrome and he couldn't sleep. He was just exhausted and um, in pain most of the time. But then the practitioner, he started doing um, Circle the Dragon and some other points, fell asleep in five minutes. And it was just so remarkable just watching him out of pain. And I'm like, yeah, this is what I wanna do. Awesome. So, Thank you for sharing. That is really wonderful. All right. So today's topic is mental health care, which, you know, is definitely one of my favorite things. I thought quite a bit about racial battle fatigue and post-traumatic slave syndrome and the effect mm -hmm. of racism on melanated humans who have to live in the United States, a country that is definitely rife with racism. So take it away. So one of the things that really got me into the field of mental health um, just to touch on that a little bit, um, was actually precisely what you said, how racism, how, racism, how trauma um, affects melanated people, BIPOC people. Um, where I grew up, there was a lot of trauma, both in the home, but also um, in the community. So I, I experienced it firsthand, and I also grew up in communities where you'd see it as well. Um, so that made me want to help others and to give other people hope and also treatment because that was one thing that for the moments that I got help, it, it helped me survive. And I definitely want to give that to somebody else, an opportunity to survive. Um, so one of the things that, one of my big interests in school was about cultures as well as about um, mental health because they're very interchangeable how our culture will affect our mental health as well as how our mental health will affect our culture. So it's kind of like a, you know, it, you know, that relationship between how we're affected versus how we are affecting other things. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that within the practice that I do is educate people about their mental health, as well as how their mental health is affecting their, their body, their, um, their relationships. So I always, it's always interesting with clients who are coming in, who are always surprised when I ask them about like, okay, so you're dealing with anxiety. How is your, how is your digestion? Like really bad. I, I usually have like acid reflux. Um, some days I, I have constipation, some days I have diarrhea. I'm like, okay, let's look at ways of addressing that. And um, we address it with acupuncture, we address it with different um, techniques. Like I'm very big on cognitive behavioral therapy as well as dialectical behavioral therapy because I believe in um, also giving clients tools about tools for how they can help themselves and learn how to cope with stress. Um, and anxiety and depression. So one of the things that I also do is I like to incorporate mindfulness as well as Qigong, because a lot of my clients, they really are helped by um, learning how to, when they're stressed, how to reduce a lot of that um, in yeah. a very healthy way. I like to explain to people that the, the benefits of acupuncture is that it cuts on your rest and digest system. Mm -hmm is typically out of balance, particularly in folks who are dealing with things like trauma, depression, or anxiety, and how the acupuncture in and of itself can just cut that part of your nervous system back on. It can cut off the fight, fight, and freeze. It can cut on the rest and digest. And then you reinforce that behavior with things like Qigong, Tai Chi, yoga, mindfulness, and cognitive behavioral therapy. Do you, so when you're, when you're doing counseling, do you put pens in people? I'm just curious. So usually how we do it is um, we, 
usually how it works out. Sometimes I have clients who are primary counseling. Sometimes they're primary acupuncturists. Um, acupuncture. So what I do is sometimes it's like 30 minutes. We're going to do focus just on counseling. And then for the other 30 minutes, we're going to focus on acupuncture. So we do a little bit of, so we're incorporating that. So it helps them to be able to process what's been going on and the stress and the, um, the mental issues that they came in here for. Um, but then it's like, okay, now that you have released that, let's put something back into you. So that mm. helps you heal at it's really effective um, in helping with that. I'm really glad you say that. You know, we live in a culture where everything's always detox, 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 take away, diet, starve, fast. And I'm like, well, you know, particularly for uh, individuals who are dealing with transgenerational trauma, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you can't just take away. You have got to replenish. You've got to tonify. You have to restore. Mm -hmm. And um, that is a component that is oftentimes missing and uh, the way Western medicine approaches that. I'm really happy that you brought that up. Um, another thing that I'm happy that you brought up when you talk about how systems are oftentimes intertwined in traditional Chinese medicine, we talk about how emotions can, can directly affect one system, one body system or another. So um, we, we oftentimes overlook things like fatigue and digestion as a part of um, a mental health manifestation in the body. I, that is... That is a huge component. You go ahead, keep going. <laughs> no, but I love that. I absolutely, absolutely do because you know it's it's something that we're not taught. We're not taught oh. by the we're taught in our acupuncture schools. That's wonderful, but we're not taught as a society about um, how everything is so in, like so interconnected. Uh, how much of a difference like that would make for for people, for their mental health, for their, phys um, their physical health, that those are not two separate things. They're they are one and the same. And if something's going on with your body, your mind registers that. If you have had emo emotional abuse, your body still registers that like physical abuse. Mm -hmm. um, so it is very important to be able to give clients tools. And that's what I, I like with the acupuncture part of it. It gives them tools. The Qigong gives them tools. Sometimes I even, encourage clients, I even teach them how to use magnets. That way it gives them a, like a sense of autonomy that um, that's taken away, especially from BIPOC people, mm -hmm. that idea that we can heal ourselves, giving us back our name, um, giving us back our health. That is important, uh, particularly in the melanated community uh, and amongst African-Americans, when we suffer from such a tragic number of mm -hmm long-term chronic diseases and metabolic diseases, and they are 100% stressed induced. And you know, when, when you go and you go through PubMed and you start reading the studies and the research, we know things like stress affects things like inflammation. We know stress affects your kidneys, we know stress affects your heart. We know stress affects your capacity to heal. And all of that goes right back into that fight, fight and freeze part of your nervous system, your sympathetic nervous system. When that guy is on, nothing else in the body can happen, but that also means that no repair and no recovery can happen. And that is one of the things that I love about this medicine. And whenever we're, we're, whenever I talk about racial battle fatigue, I'm always like, you need acupuncture. You cannot do it without acupuncture. It is, um, if, you, if, if you've ever had any mental health issues, and I definitely suffer from trauma and anxiety and, and feeling overwhelmed and not like, like, I don't say that lightly, like, I feel anxious sometimes. Like, no, I have, I have like high functioning anxiety. And what sets me back down in, in center is the acupuncture. And then I use all those other tools that I give my clients that I give to other people. This is how you maintain it. This is how you get that brain plasticity so that your mind can remember. It's like, oh, here, I want to be here. I want to live here. I want to be settled here. Right. But kind of also to add to that, it's kind of fun. It's kind of interesting to see how when we talk about, for example, generational curses um, for epigenetics, seeing yes. how the trauma and the stress and anxiety, it doesn't just affect us now. It like it embeds into our DNA. So Epic, that. Yeah. Our kids will experience it. Even if they never experienced the extra situation, they will still experience our trauma and so, then, a, and so on and so forth. You know, we talk about that as Jing in Chinese medicine, but like this huge book called the International Handbook of Transgenerational Trauma, where they talk yes. how for generations, you can 
methylation of DNA or epigenetics can be played out in children and grandchildren and great grandchildren. So, you know, we, we talk about things like, oh, you need to have a calm pregnancy and you need to have a moderate life. It's like, it wasn't for nothing. Um, it wasn't for nothing that, that we said those kinds of things. And then those formative years, you know, those ages like one through six or one through seven, as the case might be, those formative years also help to really set what's happening in that still growing and body and so like I'm a huge fan of ear seeds and acupressure and acupuncture even on children we forget that we're other people too and a lot of the uh, stresses and anxieties and emotional uh, shortcomings that people experience are oftentimes set in stone in very early ages which is why the ACEs study was so so important right we it's like oh my god you know people who have rough childhoods they they're more they have they're more likely to have things uh, like issues with substance abuse issues with cancer issues with inflammation, issues with um, uh, autoimmune disorders and early pregnancies and suicide. So like we we scoff at the, you know, just put on a happy face and think happy thoughts. And it's just like, no, we got to take mental health way more seriously in this country and especially in melanated communities. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and that's something that, again, as a, as a medicine in this country, we're still trying to understand and teach within the schools because how the effect of um, racism has affected our patients. Um, mm. So hopefully that becomes more of a part of our curriculum because it's important. And even though we talk about heart shock, um, a lot of the, um, we don't talk enough about how systemic racism uh, has affected the people who are coming in to see us. Yeah. And a lot of my clients who are people of color with a lot of the systemic racism that's showing up more and more in the news mm -hmm. and showing up more and more in the community. Because honestly, with the political system, political environment the way it is, um, a lot more domestic terrorists, let's, domestic terrorists, racists have become emboldened. And, and that has caused a lot more trauma and stress. A lot more people have stopped me out because of that than with even the trauma that they've experienced beforehand, um, just seeking me out because of the trauma of COVID, but also the trauma of systemic racism and yeah. what to do and how to survive. Yeah, it is, it's, a, it's a huge conversation that I'm, I'm glad is finally being taken seriously, mm -hmm. kind of sort of in this country, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that, that We've been talking about it for a number of years, not just because of the health disparities that can be seen in melanated communities. We started having this more serious conversation because of the birth disparities that can be seen in African-American mm -hmm. women. But then COVID came, right? And we had to ask the question, why is it that African-Americans and Latino people are being so disproportionately affected by the disease? Like what, what's causing that? And, you know, again, it goes back to that when your nervous system is always on high alert, that means your immune system can't be on. When your nervous system is always on high alert, that means there's never any rest and repair happening in the body, which means the body going into the situation with a deficit. And it's this long-term deficit that we're not talking about. You know, people's like, oh, well, you know, black people just have more problems. Like, no, 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 no. We have simply survived more problems and we survive them daily. I've had panic attacks about my kid going outside in a hoodie. Like, oh my God, he has a hoodie on. He has a hoodie on and he has a Nerf gun. Yeah. Like, what if somebody shoots him? What if somebody sees a super tall baby and doesn't understand that he's a baby with a toy and a shirt on, <laughs> right? Like, that's a real fear that we'll have to live with. There's a real fear with, am I, you know, am I going to get picked up by ICE? Am I going to be thrown into a detention center? Am I going to be separated from my kids? Am I going to be get a job? Like, there's, there are so many fears, but not just the fears. There's, there's the, um, there's the, gallbladder component in traditional Chinese medicine when we have to talk about like the life or death decisions that people who are discriminated against have to deal with on a regular basis. And those are in addition to the everyday life decisions that you have to make. And if you're facing economic hardship, that includes, you know, like, am I going to pay my bills? <laughs> Can yes. I my treatment? Can I afford my medicine? Can my kid go outside with a blaster in his hand? Like we don't even say gun anymore. No, I'm going outside with my Nerf gun. Nope, Nerf blaster. <laughs> right? Because that's mm -hmm. I shouldn't have to worry about with my, my little nine-year-old skinny tiny little person 
that is a decision that I have to make. You have to decide how am I going to deal with these racist situations that are coming up? Or even in my case, like how am I going to have this conversation about racism with my nine-year-old? Because he's nine and he's not, you know, he's not little anymore and he sees these things. And so I can already begin to see some of the trauma that is building up in him. So, you know, I've had to be more proactive with making sure that he gets treatments. I've had to be more proactive with making sure that he's taking herbs. I had to be more proactive in making sure that he's going to go forward and be less likely to to be affected by these negative impacts from early in his childhood. Yeah. Um... It's a lot. Be, it's a <laughs> lot. No, I was just going to say, like, especially being a parent during this time. Um, I'll never forget the first day that my mom, because I'm from Jamaica. Uh, so one of my, um, our, when we came to this country, um, that was one of the hardest conversations my mom ever had to give us um, about racism and how that's going to impact us for the entire time that we can live in, in America. Um, because in Jamaica, it's different. It's a majority, it's um, a lot more diverse, a lot more um, BIPOC people, um, a lot more black people, um, but not just black people. There's also Asian people that live in Jamaica. There are white people that live in Jamaica. Uh, so it's a very diverse area. Um, and even though the U.S. is diverse, it doesn't, their attitudes towards race and racism are very different. Very different. Um, so that was one of the harder conversations that my mom had to give us. Um, and that came after my sister was um, targeted in third grade by her third grade teacher. So we had never, dis we'd never experienced that before. Like we're from Jamaica, we lived a few years in Bermuda. Uh, Bermuda is also very diverse and we had white teachers. It was never a problem um, until we came to the US and that was a problem when we lived in Hollywood, Florida and got to find out that the world was not as kind as we thought it was. Yeah. And that was hard. And that is hard. Yeah. So, you know, you, you combine the experiences of being a melanated person living in the United States and then you find the, the lack that comes along from a lot of parents having to work multiple jobs, which means kids love and support and security that they need and you you combine food scarcities and you know you combine all this toxicness that is facing the so-called American dream and you know in in this day and age now you're you're combining COVID where people are having to deal with isolation and they don't have their outlets and they don't have the support systems that they used to have because you got to maintain the whole social distancing thing and kids don't get to go play or go swimming or they go they can't go to the park like the parks are, are roped off at least in california i don't know what they're like somebody like in florida depends on where you go which <laughs> we're yeah which we're seeing kind of issues with that here because even though some some areas are taking it seriously some other areas are not and it's causing a lot of death causing a lot of death and then like there's the fatigue that comes along with just being worried about COVID all the time like so worry Worry is a huge factor in traditional Chinese medicine. We attribute it to the spleen system, the spleen and stomach system, which ties directly into digestion. And we know now from Western medicine, right, and all their that your digestive system has like one of the largest immune systems. And what happens in your gut can directly affect your mental health. And so proper diet, not having to deal with food scarcity as many people are having to deal with in the United States is super important. And I have a couple of favorite points for that. How about you? Oh, I do. <laughs> so I always like to do the Buddha triangle. So that is always lovely for it. Lung, um, yeah. So the Buddha triangle, if you guys don't know, there's lung nine, there's heart seven, and there's pericardium six, right? And these are points that you can do on yourself. You can just massage around your wrist right underneath your pinky finger here. Mm -hmm. and massage under your thumb right here. Turns out lung nine is also a really good point for helping out your lung function. Just ah. to right? COVID, how about the lungs, right? And then yeah. pericardium six is definitely one of my favorite points. And you can feel it between the two tendons, I'm trying to turn so that my hand's not crooked. You can feel it between the two tendons right here beneath your wrist. You can take two fingers. Some people say three, I take two. Right there in pericardium six, most people know it as the nausea point. So if you've ever been on a boat, or if you've ever been sailing or been on a cruise and you get the nausea wristband, this is 
stimulator sets right here. And so all three of them together are one of my favorite ones that I used for emotional disturbance. So yeah. if you ever, uh, if you ever gotten your hands and your wrist massage and you felt super relaxed afterwards, then don't lie. Yeah. So another point I really love is like um, the yin, yin tong and do, um, do 24. I love crossing those needles. It's so nice. It's so nice, right? It's like, I've had someone describe it as the accu high because it just puts them <laughs> into a nice state of like peace and like, ah, the best sleep, the best sleep you'll ever have is after that. It's after any acupuncture, but definitely if you've been stimulating the, the yin tong and the dew point. So for those of you who don't is right here between your eyebrows. I like to take it and I either thread it up or I'll thread it down from higher on the dew line so I get mm -hmm. more energy pointing down. And then dew 24 is right here at your hairline if you're like me and you're trying to cover up any soft spots in your hairline. <laughs> it's right here in your <laughs> hairline. <laughs> Have any other favorite point combinations that you like to oh, use? You gotta go with gall gallbladder 20. Oh, so nice. Uh, oh so my gosh. Gallbladder 20 is where a lot of people experience migraines. It's right behind your head uh, next to what I call the mama knot, that bump that's in the back of your head on either side of that bump is a point called gallbladder 20. And then it's really good for like neck pain. It's good for headaches. It's good for like all kinds of, you know, of, of amazing, amazing things. Um, I just finished it to myself and now all my hair is standing up on my arm. I don't know if you guys can see that. <laughs> It's really great for, again, helping to cut on that parasympathetic nervous system and getting the body to go into chill and relax mode. Oh, it's it's so good. And you know what? I've never seen anybody who didn't have anxiety, who didn't have um, depression, mm -hmm. where that didn't hurt so bad or just feel tense. It's like, because because we're, you know, we're, you, you we're, do this, you look yeah, like this. Do this, whether we notice it or not. And some of the fun things I like to do with my clients who just, like, I just meet, it's like, and when is the last time your shoulders have gone down? And they're like, wait, what? what? My shoulders, they're, not, they're down. It's like, no. No, they're not. They're not. <laughs> when is the last time you relax those shoulders? And they're like, oh, I never noticed that before. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so one of my favorite ones for anxiety is I get people to rub along their breastbone. Oh, right? So those kidney points that are right there off of that breastbone. Mm -hmm. And then what I've noticed, particularly for women, uh, for people who text a lot, for people who work at desk, you know, you spend your whole day kind of over and and bent in and so you're not taking a deep breath and then when you're doing this you're encouraging yourself to open up the chest and to breathe and then you're getting all these kidney points and there's a yeah. lot that's right along here that are good for things like anxiety feeling overwhelmed feeling sad feeling suicidal feeling angry uh feeling dissatisfied not having any idea why and so women in particular because even if you go to get a massage yeah. no one ever touches your chest like they stop like right here at your collarbone <laughs> You know what? I, I like a good booby massage. A good booby I'm massage saying, is so helpful. Like, get in there. <laughs> like, help me out. Me. Oh my God. <laughs> These things are heavy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it's so helpful and it feels so relaxed. And it's like, it ah, why don't we do this more often? Because <laughs> we live in a society where people like to sue you. And so, you know, you're touching somebody's boobs and it looks kind of, it looks kind of funny, but it's something you can do for yourself. And so I like to teach like to, to dig into lung one which is right off the off the the armpit under the uh shoulder Ooh, i'm losing my anatomy <laughs> <Long day. laughs> right here under the, under the shoulder i have no idea what happened to my camera oh wow that's a cool trick though that is a cool trick ah uh, did something splash on it it's hot <laughs> Anybody can do this. You can take your thumbs and dig right here in the sides of your armpit and you'll yeah. your pec muscles right here. And a lot of people who have neck and shoulder pain from having their shoulders hunched up like this, you get short pec muscles. And so mm -hmm. if you your thumbs right there and you just kind of dig along in there, then uh, you'll you'll get a lot of relief. You'll, it'll be a lot easier to drop the shoulders down where a lot of people hold their stress. And then the lung point is, is the, the organ of grief and sadness. And, you know, um, a lot of things that are that are anxiety or a lot of things that are stress and a lot of things that are feeling overwhelmed have an element of sadness to them. So like, you know, you can again rub here across the chest and open up the chest and take a deep breath and then come and dig your finger, your thumbs into your armpits and give yourself like a really great massage. Yeah. And you, you know, it's also a really good point, LI11 for 
um, just the tapping exercise for right here. Uh huh. Right there, right you off. Notice the that, like, just like between LI eleven, LI ten, you start tapping it, and you just feel like ah, and you just stay on that one part that just I'll feels like, yep. And you I start hope you guys are doing it. this. <laughs> dropping jet it is amazing it's really great for anxiety it's really, it's really great i know and then li10 is a little further down the form and a lot of people have a lot of tension right here that they don't even realize so you can give that a lot of uh, a little massage in addition to to your tapping one of my uh, other favorite points is actually to come right above the ear right a lot of muscles that tie into the face and people have you know they call it resting witch face <laughs> You know what? I don't get resting. I don't have resting witch face. I have resting sad kitten face. <laughs> if your face is, if you feel like your face is having or holding a lot of tension, or if you have like a lot of things in your jaw from when you're clenching all the time from that anxiety and that stress, there's a lot of muscles that sit right above the ear. We have points right here in traditional Chinese medicine, gallbladder eight and nine, and all those kinds of things. And you rub right here. And for the acu people watching, thread a needle. Just like start right here at the temple and just thread that bad boy all the way back, hit the whole thing. And um, it is great for mm -hmm. I'm overwhelmed because again, the second yeah. butter line, that constant decision making thing that you have to do, which is again, where you're starting to get those tension headaches. So you can start at your temples and then just rub your way back, right? And it'll help out with that constant tension. You'll feel the, the, the release of endorphins coming down your neck and your chin. And it's, it's really, really wonderful for getting the brain kind of back on track, right? So these are all self-massaging, self-acupressure uh, things that you can do for yourself at home so that you can, yeah, <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm also looking at Facebook over here on my phone to make sure that I'm catching people. I do, I love this. Like if you guys have never put your thumbs in the side of your pec muscles, you really need to do that. You have no idea how much tension you can't even let go of your shoulders because your body doesn't, even, your body can't bring the shoulders down because the pec muscles are so used to being squeezed and they need to, they need to be reminded to, to let go. That is definitely one of my favorites. And it also will fix a lot of neck pain. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, one. This but is, it's also this really good. good. Again, COVID to stimulate that. Stimulate oh, I love it. For long well, long one, sorry, long one. Words. Long one. <laughs> long one it's really good stimulate yeah stimulate that point help your immune system help your immune system out help your lungs out it's mm -hmm. good for coughs it's good for wheezing it's good for shortness of breath so you know it's not just about oh i'm sad i'm going to stick my 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 thumbs right here or i'm stressed i'm going to stick my thumbs right here that's the beauty of chinese medicine right like mm -hmm. there is no one thing people are always What's the point for this it was like ah it kind of depends <laughs> yeah but you know what? That's one of the things I absolutely love about it because with a lot of medicine for like um, conventional Western medicine, however you want to, however they want to class themselves, uh, it's always, it's more of a one size fits all. And that creates a lot of confusion because what depression would look for like for one person is very different than how depression looks like for another person. For it example, depends for, on the underlying cause, right? right? And like, for example, um, and also it depends on like our, and our culture for like um, culture and also um, our gender, our sex, our identity of how we um, were allowed to have depression or allowed to have anxiety. Because like for guys, it's not like for um, cis men, cis black men, cis men in general, cis males, and also for um, just there's that masculine idea that if you do, if you cry, then yeah. it's a bad thing. That you are seen as weak. You're seen as you know uh, emotional, which I hate that word so much <laughs> because it, it's used based. That word is used as a way of control uh, yeah. when you're you don't want someone to cry in front of you or to experience what they're feeling, or you don't want them to experience what they're feeling based on what you've done. You're, I hear that word used like, oh, you're so emotional. And it's it's used as, it's a harmful word. I hear it from my yeah, it's clients. Weaponized. Like I, yeah. Totally weaponized. Um, you know, I think that's not fair and it's unfortunate that men, like they either get to be happy or angry and that's kind of like it. <laughs> yeah. And that's not fair. And so this yeah. is what 
have like that god awful suicide rate, particularly amongst African American males, young African American males, where they feel like they they don't get to be a, a full human being. They don't get to experience that wide range of emotions <clears throat> because it's frowned upon. You know, you got to be hard, and that's kind of it. And that. It's not real. All emotions are real emotions. All emotions are deserving emotions. And everybody gets to have all of their emotional content. Like you don't want to read. <laughs> and you know, and that's the thing. It's like um, we have to, that's one of the things I, I teach my clients. Like emotions are not not emotions are not bad. There's no such thing as a bad emotion. Emotions are emotions. It's how your brain is um responding to the situation. There's no thing of like happiness is good and sadness is bad, it's just, they're there. So taking away that kind of binary thinking related to emotions is very helpful because it's like, oh, I'm allowed to be anxious right now, or yeah. I'm allowed to be stressed. This is normal. You this are allowed to be all these things. Especially right now in, in the social political oh, yeah. dealing with a pandemic. And so like, you know, I tell people, it's like, if you can't get it done, it's okay. I am the epitome of the things that cannot be done. And I do a lot, right? And I feel like, oh my God, I never got all the things done. I can't get them all done. Yeah. And I have to remind myself, it's like, okay, that's called anxiety. You know, you're like, you're, you're forcing yourself to be a perfectionist and trying to do all the things. And you get to feel anxious. You get to feel worried. You get to feel scared. You get to be angry at what's happening, particularly in this country. I know we do occasionally have people who are tuning in from other places, but like here in the US, you, you get to have the whole gamut of emotions that aren't yeah. happy because yeah. the scary time that we live in, you, you know, you should be able to find a happy spot somewhere in there. And if you feel like you're not finding that happy spot and that you're always living in an emotion that is, uh, that is sad or anxious mm -hmm. or or overwhelmed, then this is why we're having this conversation so that you can feel comfortable going out there and say, you know, I might need a little help. And a little help might be reaching out to your community and be like, hey, I need help with my kid or I need help with healthy foods or I need I need a shoulder just to cry on and, and to vent on. And all of those things are normal. And you should never demonize anybody who's having a, a hard time with any of their emotional content, right? They're all appropriate responses to a stimuli. And also kind of like kind of also I wanted to circle back to that because the idea of well the stigma for having emotions, especially for black men, it's very much related to slavery. Yeah. Like being sold and being and not and the brutality of slavery on everything that it like encompasses. Um how black mothers, their children were sold off, ripped from their arms <laughs> and just having to have that happen and then just go into the field and if anything, if they cried or showed emotion, they'll be beat or raped. Anything happens. So kind any of any kind of punishment. Any kind of punishment. So being used to that tradition of you can't show emotions, you can't have that. And it's being replayed over and over. And then we're in generations where we don't understand why this has happened, but because um that we're so used to doing it. Yeah. It's like taking back that emotion, taking it back the fullness of our emotions is taking back um, our humanity <laughs> as, as, and just taking back our, who we are. I mean, we're as human as anybody else. As anybody else. And we get to have all, we get to have a full range of experiences. And <clears throat> what you're uh, referring to, you know, taking things back to slavery. There is a book that I love. If you've ever talk, you hear me talk about it all the time. It's called Post-Traumatic Slave Syndrome. It's written by Dr. Grew. And if you haven't read it, you should. <laughs> you really should go pick that up and give that woman a very close gander. I have had the privilege of taking multiple classes with her. And like every time I listen, um, there, there's just a wealth of information and knowledge uh, that we learn. And a lot of the behaviors that are seen as normal uh, in the African American community stem, as you said, directly from our, our heritage as African of slaves. So we're, we're starting to run low on time. I want to make sure that people who are watching us out in Facebook land, the people who have joined us on Zoom, does anybody have any questions before we just continue to ramble on? Yes, Mama Karima. <clears throat> I do actually have a question. So I'm just curious, and I know this is obviously, you know, kind of subjective and it can change case by case, person to person, but how effective do you guys feel like acupuncture can be to really mitigate some of those very serious, um, very serious symptoms of 
depression and anxiety because I feel like people don't really believe you can it can work or I mean that you can't take like other medication like western medication without acupuncture like okay I'm confusing myself so basically do you feel like acupuncture can be used in and of itself to mitigate the symptoms of depression and or anxiety or do you feel that you really should combine them with western medication or do you feel like it just depends Does that makes sense yeah um i definitely um like i get you're saying if i if i'm understanding correctly you're asking if um doing acupuncture uh, would be enough to uh, affect change for anxiety and depression or should acupuncture be used in conjunction with um psychotropic medication is that what yeah, you're so, yeah okay I, I <laughs> so I was asking. Well, um, acupuncture is very helpful, and herbs are very helpful for treating um, the depression, anxiety. Um, I've seen it work like an amazing. I've seen it work amazingly for people who have been jumping from uh, medication to medication because they couldn't find a good fit um, for them. Um, also, at the same time. Um, I'm never anti-medication, I wanna put that out there. So if the person needs their medication, um, it's, I've never wanted to tell them to get off. I'm helping, I help them try to get off of the medication if they have good strategies, if they have a good plan in place. Um, but as I've had friends who, um, they have, weren't doing acupuncture for it. So I'll just um, put that out there. But I have had friends who stopped their medication and with, the disorder that they have um, that wasn't a wise move for them because they, how do you put it? Their chromosomes don't make enough of certain um, neurotransmitters. So can acupuncture work for anxiety and depression? Absolutely. It can help with schizophrenia. It can help with pretty much any mental health issue. Um, however, if you're going to recommend clients to, um, I call them clients because I see both um, acupuncture acupuncture and counseling clients, so I just one term. Um, <laughs> if you're going to recommend that, I never suggest it would be something that you'd work in conjunction with their psychiatrist to help taper them off and to see if they can safely taper off of it. And um, I recommend also encouraging them if they don't already have to get a therapist so they can also build up tools. Um, because sometimes with uh, with psychotropic medication, uh, it's very effective. It's more effective with counseling, but not all psychiatrists get them counseling. Um, as an acupuncturist, being able to recommend, see a counselor, let's work on these tools to get you off the medication if necessary, um, if possible. And that's the word, possible. Um, some people, again, may not have, an, um, they might not be able to, but that's always the goal. I think another component of that is that um, people don't understand that acupuncture is not a procedure. It's something that you have to do. So in terms of uh, the way that the Lincoln Detox Center, the People's Detox Center was set up in New York for people to be able to withdraw from things like heroin, right? Mm -hmm. you know, which is pretty nasty stuff. People had access to acupuncture the same way that you would have access to your medicine. So when you're, when you're taking a pharmaceutical, you might take this one to three times a day. So <clears throat> if you're having a crisis, we don't always have access to acupuncture one to three times a day. We don't necessarily even have access to acupuncture twice a week. So depending on the severity of your, of your situation, right? Depending on the severity of your situation, you may not be able to get enough acupuncture to allow you to step away, step down, step in a different direction than your Western pharmaceuticals. The ultimate goal is for health, vitality, and normality and quality of life. So whatever you got to do to be able to get to that, then that is the answer. I, you know, I look forward to the day where people can just walk up to get acupuncture or at least the NADA protocol, like mm -hmm. up and get coffee. <laughs> 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 Almost anywhere you go, you can get a cup of coffee, but you can't say that about ear seeds and you can't say that about acupuncture. So having access to the medicine is really, really, really important. And if you intend to use it to be able to step away from uh, your pharmaceuticals, then you have got to follow your treatment protocol. And knowing that when you step away from the treatment protocol, if you have an imbalance, then that imbalance can return if you're not doing other things to help, to help it to stay in place. 
The medicine is powerful. Anything that can get you off of methadone is good. (laughs) Methadone is worse than heroin. But if you can't get acupuncture once a month and think that you're going to maintain your, your, your clean free status and your methadone free status and your heroin free status, um, that's not how that works. No, and, and, and kind of touching on the substance abuse, I mean, there's a saying that with, I mean, with any kind of substance abuse issue, you have, it's every, it's an everyday battle. It's an every minute battle. It's an every second battle. So when you're not working on your recovery, that's when the addiction takes over again. Um, it is, um, and the same thing with acupuncture, if you're not taking, like when we're doing treatment, you have to always be mindful of yourself mindful of how you're treating yourself, mindful of what you're putting into your body, mindful of what you're allowing to affect you. Um, So with acupuncture, um, in terms of mental health, it is, again, effective. And there have been many studies that have shown effective. But I also believe it's it's hard for me to say because it is a case-by-case basis because I do realize there are some people who won't always be on that medication for different reasons. Um, but giving yourself the tools, giving yourself the help and the access and learning to take responsibility or that you can take responsibility and have autonomy over your mental health and over your health in general is a very pow- is one of the most powerful things that you can give to somebody. Because a lot of people, when they're coming to acupuncturists or coming to any medical professional, it's kind of that fix me mindset. Mm-hmm. What I like to give back to them is like, well, let's talk about ways you can fix you. Yes, <clears throat> that is really important. Giving people the tools to be in control of themselves. I like to tell people, it's like, I am simply a guest on your path to healing. It is not my job to stay on this path forever. And that's how that works, right? Um, also in terms of being able to give you those tools, a lot of people don't understand how mental health really manifests in the body. Like, you know, we mm-hmm feeling sad or feeling anxious, but sometimes anxiety isn't your heart racing, right? Sometimes anxiety is like not not having the capacity to sit down. Sometimes anxiety is not being able to sequence tasks. Sometimes anxiety is feeling nauseous or going to the bathroom, right? Sometimes um, anger comes across as fatigue because you're just too tired to deal with anything. And if you have to deal with anything, then you have this explosion and so part of that toolkit is understanding, particularly from Chinese medicine, it's really good for this, understanding the different ways that this emotion is beginning to literally affect your physical form. Are you getting headaches? Do you have dry mouth? Do you have, um, are you having- Joint pain. Huh? Joint pain. Joint That's pain. Are you having joint pain? Pain mm-hmm. gets worse under duress. And we don't think about that. It's just like, I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, my hip just started bothering me. Say, so, yeah, what mm-hmm. else? Last week, I got into it with my boss. It's like, okay, you're stressed out. Okay, I get you. No, 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 I'm not stressed. Okay. <laughs> there, I forget what the name is, um, the Japanese name for it, but it's translated as broken heart syndrome. Mm. That is a really interesting. Um, it's it's fairly rare, although I imagine probably not rare lately. Um, but under a certain amount of duress, your heart will literally. Um, the muscles in your heart would literally just break apart. Um, you usually see for older couples, like if one um, one person in the couple dies, the other one will die of a, a literal broken heart. And you can see it on the um, in the anatomy and the, and the x-ray of like what's happened to that person's heart. Well, the cardiac tissue just disintegrates, right? And so again, in this country, we don't take emotion seriously, but we need to. And it's not just the spiritual bypassing and the spiritual gaslighting of just think happy thoughts and be grateful for all that you have. And that's important. I'm not, I'm not knocking that practice. You should definitely find things to be happy and grateful for. But um, being honest with yourself about where you're sitting at in your, in your mental health. Yeah. I'm looking, does anyone else in Facebook land or Mama Creamer or Mama uh, Trainee, Tranny, Mama PB, Mr. Oh, P- <laughs> it's Trine. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was like cooking dinner. I was like, man, I am really hungry right now. <laughs> That's fair. I got dinner waiting downstairs as soon as we get done. <laughs> like, I felt, so I've been like uh, walking back and forth like, man, I'm really hungry. But I was very curious. I'm currently an acupuncture student. And um, yeah, I'm 
ready to connect with other black acupuncturists. So yeah, I, I would love to, um, you know. So let me selfishly plug right now. If you guys don't know about blackacupuncturist.com, you should. And whether you're a practitioner or a student, you should go and get listed. It is free. There will never, ever, ever be a charge for listing your name and your information on blackacupuncturist.com. And it's uh, invented in part so that we as black acupuncturists and black acupuncture students had a able to connect and to be able to network and to be able to send referrals to individuals who are looking for other melanated healers. So make sure that you're listed. <coughs> yes, I, I signed up. I signed up. <laughs> Great. If you're, if you are, make sure that you signed up as a student, and then we have a general meeting that is coming about uh, on the 26th for everyone. Everyone who's who is a potential member is welcome to come. So if you're a student or if you're a professional, if you know of a student or a professional uh, of, of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine, make sure that information is being disseminated and that you please come and hear the results of our survey. Um, and the different things that we're trying to do. Since you are a student, one of the first items of business that we are definitely looking for. Uh, it's scholarship money to be able to help support our students to make sure that they have money for books. And as we are able to take in larger and larger donations and begin to make money as an organization, then we'll be able to start talking about like paying off some school bills and all of those kinds of things. So uh, double check, make sure your name is on there because if you're a student, I'm, I swear I don't recognize your name. And I do look at the site fairly regularly. <laughs> And I don't think we are under our student section. So go back and re-sign up. Make sure you submit your picture and answer all the questions. We do have a GoFundMe uh, for blackacupuncturist.com if you're interested in funding the, the website and making sure that we are able to continue to move forward and to help people. Some of our other immediate projects include helping out with things like ear seeds. I am this close mm -hmm. to ear seeds that are not that whatever that color is that they usually are so that they look better on melanated skin. I uh, I have to I had to find a Pantone color workbook. That's an expensive piece of paper right there. All right. So any more questions about mental health? Any more questions for our beautiful guest Amita Hart? Uh, any questions out of yes, yeah, students really do need the help. I see you there, Mama Aliyah. We are we are really, really that. that is definitely one of the first items up for bid. And then we are also talking about mentorship programs uh, for students because it is rough to be a Black acupuncturist. We do exist predominantly oh, yeah. in the minority. Um, yes, it is. So, well, I'm already overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, man, right? It is rough. Uh, you know, racial battle fatigue was something that came about. The, the term racial battle fatigue came about because it was describing uh, the effects on the human body and the mental and the mind of being. African American in a white institution and all the stresses that that entails. Again, going back to talking about the effects of racism on health. So uh, we, will, we definitely want to have a mentorship program so that people don't feel alone and they don't feel professionally isolated because it can be really rough to go in a room of 50 people, 100 people, 500 people, and you're the only spot in the room or there's only two spots in the room and then you have to deal with all these microaggressions. And it's not just in institutions, right? Like this is this is what racism is. It's dealing with microaggressions. It's dealing with um, it's dealing with everyday racism and all the other stresses that you have to do. So make sure that you're signed up, uh, Mama Grima and Mama PV. <laughs> Mama Heart. <laughs> do it now. So I think what happened was I signed up for the newsletter, but I didn't sign up to put my bio. Yeah, get your bio up there because that's the only way we're gonna be able to find you when we're ready to hand out money. If you are not listed, we can't find you. Right. Oh, please, give me money. <laughs> so you, uh, you definitely, Karima, do you have your hand up? No. I was going to let you finish. He's just blue thing all of a sudden. <laughs> I was so, going to let you finish the thought that I had a question. So yeah, you can finish. Okay. What's your question? So I was just wondering if you guys know anything about the um, Nate technique for just everything. The, the what technique? You broke up on my end. Nate, it's like N A E T. Oh, the N E A T. Oh yeah. Have you guys ever tried that? Have any experience with I that? I have not. I have not had experience doing that. Yeah. So I, I have heard that, really good studies about it, but I have not had the pleasure of doing it. I I've seen people do it. I've heard good studies about it. 
I don't do it myself. My my personal hang up, and I'm telling you this is my personal hang up, is that it looks a little too much like applied kinesiology to me. And I am not a fan of applied kinesiology in any way, fashion, shape, or form. So um, if you are a student, I definitely say get all the tools under your tool belt. There's no such thing as a tool that you shouldn't have. Right, whether it's um, NEAT testing, whether it's te teaching people tapping, if you want to do medicine, if you want to do five element um, five element acupuncture, which is something that I scoffed at until I got into mental health care. I was just like, I want some real acupuncture. I don't want to hear about this five element stuff. And boy, was I wrong, right? <laughs> Right. If you want to learn Japanese acupuncture, Korean acupuncture, there's no such thing as a tool belt that you can't utilize, excuse me, that you mm -hmm. can at some point in time in your practice. I even do things like acutonics, and I'm a huge fan of East M1 needles because as uh, Mama Hearts was talking about being able to produce neurotransmitters, East M1 needles can help your body to produce the necessary neurotransmitters, particularly if you have a nutritional profile to support that. So whatever you want to learn, do it. Yeah. Do it. And one thing I do recommend, I mean, there are plenty of books, there are plenty of resources out there that um, that can help you with, you know, being able to support your um, your patient's mental health. Um, for example, The Psyche in Chinese Medicine by Masiosa, it's a really helpful book to have. Um, Treating Emotional Trauma with Chinese Medicine. Yes. Um, by, oh, what's his name again? I don't I have remember. him open right now. <laughs> by um, um, C.T. Coleman. He's a really good author for that. Um, the Heart Shock book is really good. There's um, many other books like um, The Tao of Trauma. The Tao of Trauma, The Weaver book, it. something I heard that, that was weaver? pretty good. You know, I still have not read the web, the web that has no weaver or whatever it is. Hey. Owned this book for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's on my it's on my it's on my list, but I haven't done it yet either. So my list no is shame. a long list. I'll get to it eventually. In addition, you know, if you're an acupuncture student or if you're, um, you know, just a part of the general public and you want to learn more about these things and the, the acupuncture books are heavy, there are a number of books that are written from like the Western science perspective where you don't have to twist your brain around quite so much so that the body keeps the score, polyvagal, uh, broken ladder, um, are some awesome books that those are just like the top three that, that, I, that I can think of off the top of my head. There are so many books that begin to like the effects of long-term chronic stress. Ooh, um, why zebras have no ulcers. That's a great one. You should definitely read that. Oh, that's a good one. Um, so you, you should, reading these books, uh, particularly if you're an acupuncture student, if you're just a regular person who wants to kind of understand, it's like, well, what's this stress thing all about? When you begin to, to read some of the research and the studies behind it, then you begin to have a better understanding of how this long-term chronic stress begins to break the body down and why it's important not to gaslight yourself and to say, okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, when you're not, right? It's, it's kind of like, be okay. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like the dog burning with, like in the room, there's fly, flames over, all over them. It's like, this is okay. No. Uh, <laughs> it's not okay. It's not okay. Yeah. All right. Mama Demita Hearts, thank you. I'm, I'm determined to call you Harris. Mama Demita Hearts, thank you <laughs> for joining us today. I don't know if anybody out there left in Facebook land or if either of our two Zoom guests have any further questions. If so, please let us know. Great. So um, by all means, please share the Black Acupuncturist website. Uh, please share the, the GoFundMe, please, you know, make posts about it and let people know that it's there because we are desperately trying to make sure that we collect all the black and brown people up there. Eventually we will have a Friends of the Black Acupuncture Association, uh, places for people who are Latina or Puerto Rican or Dominican or uh, allyship who just wanna be able to kind of help with the movement of understanding that we do have to begin to, uh, really change the conversation that we're having around racism and uh, how it's affecting melanated people uh, in the country and how like we really must address the psychological damage that is happening to individuals if we want to be able to close the, the racial health disparities gap that, that we see in this country. Like food and money are great, but broken minds must be mended because where the mind goes, the body will follow. And before we go, I just want to um, put one thing out there, kind of jumping off of what you said. There is, uh, so in my community, the Gainesville community, we are trying to um, raise the money and awareness for one of the um, community, Black communities that has a lot of disparity. Um, Porter's Qu um, Quarters, 
Um, these is one of the um, black older neighborhoods that we have that has been having a lot of issues with um, systemic racism, um, poverty, um, suicides have been kind of frequent as well as gang activity. And we're trying to just bring awareness and also bring support because um, with COVID what happened, a lot of people have a lot of different agencies that would help there um, have stopped. And these are people mm. who are in desperate need of support. So um, if you, if there's anybody out there that knows um, Mama Bay Williams, um, I'm also gonna try to send that link out that way they can also get support because that's a community that is in dire need of just Absolutely. help and love. <clears throat> Definitely, we definitely want to support all the negatively impacted disenfranchised communities that are going through the pandemic. All right, I have people who are, you know, coming back and forth to the door. Let me know that it's past six o'clock. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for joining me. Be sure to join us next week. I forgot who our guest speaker is because I haven't made a nice long list. I can't remember what the topic is. I have no idea. Uh, but join us next week because we're going to another black guy i'm sorry i'm not i don't have it together i don't just it's things. okay you don't have to <laughs> but you i'll be here have to. At five o'clock right <laughs> you guys come on and join us the you know it's always free uh please share the website please uh share the videos so that people continue to help us to grow all right thank you again right, for coming thank you thank you for inviting me appreciate thank it you. hold on mama hearts don't hang up <laughs>